I had lost all my friends from traveling so much from the past four years. Like Danny's travel days for last year were something like 260. You know, yeah, you're living out of a hotel and out of your apartment in Europe that you're only in, you know, for some of the time and it's hard. It's really hard. Okay, come on. They went around. I mean, I can't think of one couple that I know that the husband is a pro cyclist that they haven't just had serious difficulties. I don't know, they're really, they're really great guys, but they're really like, I think just by necessity, they're very narcissistic as well. They just, you know, everything kind of revolves around their training, their diet, themselves, how they feel, how they're being supported, that sort of thing. And I think that makes it hard. <laughs> Makes it really hard. Today's a day, so he can't even put it into words how how emotionally uh, strong it is. It's just unreal. Hello. Hey, Pat. I'm a member of the 2008 Olympic team. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm good, Dad. How are you? You better, uh, you better get ready to go to China. It's pretty darn cool, huh? Dad, I can't believe it's happening. <laughs> Our goals for the Tour de France, going in, more than anything else, I want to see that our team is combative. You know, we're in the breakaways, we're part of the race. We're one of the teams racing the Tour de France. We're not just surviving the Tour de France. And I think that that's fundamentally important for us. You know, there are so many teams that race the Tour de France that really, they're there, but they're not part of the game. And we want to be part of the game. I don't want to just be the kid that begs his way in to get an invitation to the cool kids party, and then he goes and just sits in the corner. Dave, Christian, uh, Martin, Trent, Danny, uh, Danny Pate, Ryder, Julian. There's your seven. Everybody agrees on that seven. Yeah, everyone agrees on the seven. So then there's the last two. So it's Christoph, Tyler, Will, Magnus for yeah, two yeah. spots. Yeah. Yeah. Four final guys are Tyler Farrar, Magnus Backstead, Will Frischkorn, and Christoph Laurent. And we only have two spots for those four guys. Christophe Laurent, his strengths are going to be that he'll be consistent. His weakness is he still hasn't learned English, so his communication skills inside the team aren't, aren't so good. Magnus's strength is he'll be very experienced in the Tour de France. His weaknesses are that when he's off form, he just can't climb at all. Tyler Farrar is another sprinter, but he really hasn't shown great climbing form so far this year. Will, his strengths are basically his enthusiasm and his willingness to just completely die for the team. His weakness is just, he's never done a tour. He's a little bit inexperienced. A little stress going, kind of waiting to hear what Jonathan has to say today. The tour is the pinnacle. It's, uh, you know, when people think, especially in the US, when people think of cycling, they think of the Tour de France. And, for all of us, those U.S. guys, I mean, when we started cycling, that's that's what's been in the back of our minds the whole time, I think, for most of us at least. And and all of a sudden feeling like that's a possibility is, uh, yeah, it's different than, different than any other race. Magnus at 80% is better than the other three, so Magnus has got to go. I think with Tyler, from what I saw in Route yeah, de Sud, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he, Tyler can't, he can't finish the Tour de France. Yeah, yeah. It's a questionable whether he can even, you know, even because stage six is already yeah, pretty yeah, hilly. Yeah, yeah. Will and uh, Christophe, they are in the same 
situation. Yeah. So it's, take a French guy. You're right. That you know, with Christoph, you get you know French media and ASOs just a little bit happier. They, but maybe they don't care. Like maybe, but like they're just a little bit happier. The French media is a little bit happier. If you're looking for a business standpoint, as far as Garmin, as far as the American team, we're going to take Will. That, that's I mean, a that's lot Will. more TV coverage, right? Well, there's only four Americans in the whole race. Well, three. But, he, like but Will's going to get TV coverage mm -hmm. even if he's not a star because they have to tell the Americans. Well, well, what about, what about Christoph? I mean, if he doesn't make the tour team, is, I mean, is he going like, to commit suicide and no. go to the press and tell the press that we're a shitty team? And, yeah, but then he, you know, pull the, he's only talking out his ass then. Mm -hmm. he just, that is a question. Have we debated it enough? Yeah. Are we ready for the... All right, here, I'll, I'm going to go... I'm, I'm going democratic here, man. Because that's the way this team started, so. You're wrong about Magnus, Whitey. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come and find you. If, if Magnus is average, it's still better than taking two average drivers. Okay, here we go. No, it's Jimmy. Yo. Oh, thank you, boss. <laughs> thank you so much. That's, that's, that's a relief. <laughs> that's good to hear. Do what you would have brought, That man. works. <laughs> Congratulations, man. Oh, I knew. Hey, Tyler, I knew. Uh, yeah, I mean, we just basically had the director's meeting, and we, uh, sorry. No, I, I mean, I don't think you're being penalized. I'm just, I'm just telling you what the, you know, I'm, I'm just telling you that, that, you know, I mean, I could be dead wrong. I'm not saying, you know, and, you know, and there's still obviously the possibility that you go if somebody gets sick or whatever over the next couple of days. But, um, you know, that, that's, that's the, <laughs> that didn't go particularly well. I'm looking forward to this race. I mean, I'm, I'm nervous because I have based my whole year around it, but I'm also confident that I've done everything right, and I'm, I'm going to enjoy it. You know, start of the year, people didn't see us as a big team, but we've ridden like a big team from day one. That's why we've achieved big things. I've been very consistent with a, a pretty small and inexperienced team. We've made done some super things because of the way we've ridden as a team, you know? Whether we win or we lose, whatever happens in the next three weeks, we do it together. We do it collectively, you know? All right, boys. Nap time. Christian Prudhomme pulls the flag in to indicate that the Tour de France is now most definitely started. Tour de France is three weeks, 2,500 miles, and 21 stages. Each race is very high intensity, and the, and the riders are allowed to recover overnight, and then it's high intensity the next year. It's like doing a marathon every day for three weeks. I mean, imagine if marathon runners had to do that. I mean, they'd, they'd you know, be on their deathbeds by the end of the thing, and that's the way the tour riders are. As soon as the flag came in at the start of the stage, it was the American on the Garmin Chipotle team who launched the first attack at kilometer zero. William Frischkorn was keen to get away from the rest of the peloton. Come on, Will. Come on, Will. Come on, Will. Come on, you're there, buddy. The four men have just gone past the official 25 kilometer to go banner. They now know they're looking at 35 minutes of pain left and probably a whole lot of glory. And if you want me to pick a winner from this group, ah, I'm not sure. Bill's got a shot at winning. Strong tailwind, so there's no way the group's going to be chasing him. It's going to be basically each guy versus each guy, a four man breakaway. And He's got a one in four chance of winning right now, which was a lot better than uh, how we started the day. Well, forget the race for first place now. The winner's going to be Paolo Longo, Romain Failure, Samuel Dumoulin, or William Frischkorn of Garmin Chipotle. One of those four today will win the Tour de France stage. For a rider like Will, you know, it isn't necessarily a star or whatever. Like winning a stage of the Tour de France is the defining moment of, of, a, of a, you know, of an average professional rider's career. Paolo Longo, I've never seen him uh, sprint in my life, so I don't know, of course. The other riders will be doing just what I'm doing, and they're setting. There goes the attack. Dumoulin's not living into the sprint, and Will Frischkorn is going after him, too. Paolo Longo, a little bit slower. Romain Fenier, he tags on, on the Will. back. Come on, Will. 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 Come on, Will
<laughs> it's all about to come together again. 900 meters to the finishing line. Afelio is going to go straight by them. Fishcorn must react. This boy is going to go out on a high in yellow and as a stage winner. Fishcorn goes again. He drills himself here, but he's taking with him Dumoulin, who may still have some legs left. Forget Longo, he's gone now. This is an awful long kilometer for these rides. Come on, William Fishcorn. For Garmin Chipotle. And we're on the line. Fishcorn, that was the way we thought, Paul. Dumoulin gets the win. Fishcorn gets second. Fellure gets third. Oh. Good, awesome. good, good. Did you good, get sec two? Yeah. Yes. Uh -oh. Actually, I'm disappointed. <laughs> it was an amazing day. All right, I mean, amazing. Attacked literally K0, dove through, we were gone. And, uh, oh man. You look so good I out thought there. I, uh, I thought I had a chance there. And, uh, oh man. Did you think of attacking at all? Oh, it's, it's a consolation the red, the red. prize. You know, I think probably came my way because I initiated the breakaway. But, you know, to get that close, to get that sniff, but not the taste is, is tough. You know, what it's the stage victory the tour does for you, for your career is huge. And to be close to that, but not, yeah, yeah. But, no, still an amazing day. Um, I'm not really nervous for today, you know, it should be, it should be a good day. That's actually a perfect lead I'm worried about Magnus. He really hasn't shown great climbing for him so far this year. He's got a self-belief that sometimes is a little bit misplaced. You know, say, oh, I'm in great form. But it's not always in great form when he says he's in great form. <laughs> Well, we're not going to get very long for a few deep breaths, Paul, before we are on to that second category climb. We're virtually at the start of it now. Well, when they come into the town of Murat, that's basically for where the climb starts. So anybody who's missed out has got to get right up to the front. fine today for the first 50 kilometers and then I kind of started feeling that my, my legs were you know going a bit heavy and got worse and worse and worse and worse and by the time we got to the uh, fourth category climb I just had nothing left nothing at all I so wanted to make make it to Paris this year you know to finish just four minutes outside the time limit there, there is nothing worse for a cyclist. Literally, there is nothing worse. You know, he's a big guy, so, you know, uh, I think he just kind of, uh, yeah, just wasn't able to do it. That's a shame. Well, Magnus did not make the time cut. It's a percentage of the winner's time that if you finish outside of that, you are not allowed to start the next stage. You're basically eliminated from the race, whether or not you finished or not. It came as a surprise to everybody that Maggie Bagstad missed the time cut. Uh, he looked visibly in pain after the stage. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened? I mean, you know, we all have bad days at work, and so um, he had his. 